Hey y'all, welcome back to Flippin' Fish. Heading out this morning. Uh, I'm gonna go up and uh, hit a couple of honey holes. Uh, the weather's been cold and a lot of ice. Uh, I'm gonna try and do a little open water fishing in some of the rivers uh, a little bit further up north here. See if we can't catch a trout or maybe a salmon or whatever's biting. Uh, I'm also gonna take some time today to try out a new eye bobber that I got over the over winter. Um, you know, the uh, investment uh, for one of these eye bobbers these days is somewhere between uh, uh, before the holidays it was about $79 and then uh, it seemed like the once they got around right around the holidays they jumped up to about a hundred bucks a piece so I'm sure the price will probably come down you can find them on just about any site now Amazon eBay uh, take your pick you know there's some uh, previously owned on eBay that I saw in the 50 to 60 dollar range so if you're interested in going that route and you don't have a lot of money it might be an idea to invest in one of those although you know it's used so you get what you pay for um, really interested to figure out what I can do with this today the biggest opportunity I can see with it is you know I do a lot of bank fishing and you can only read so much uh, from the surface and then you can look at topographical maps and stuff and and uh, various uh, various navigation maps for uh, watercraft and such but you're not gonna find every little it's not gonna show you the structure it's not gonna show you um, what's underneath the water all it's really gonna do is show you water depth and um, you know the bends in the river and so on so I'm really interested to see what this could do for underwater mapping, uh, if it could actually truly show me structure or not, and uh, give me a little bit more of an advantage when I'm standing on the bank as to where to cast. Uh, you know, you find your eddies, you find your slack water spots, those kinds of things, but you know, in a pond, there's none of that. Uh, you're looking out at just basically a flat surface most of the time, and um, there's no real current or anything like that on a pond or a lake. So be interesting to find out what's underneath and uh, where the fish are congregating and sometimes uh, you know, during different times of the year they might not be all the way at the bottom they might be somewhere on the bank at you know, you know halfway in between they might be up in the shallow coves uh, really depending upon what's going on whether it's spawn whether it's warmer water in there at the time of the day lunar cycles all kinds of things factor into this but this is just one more tool to have in a toolbox and for me to kind of figure out where I'd like to drop my baits and uh, where the best possibilities are. So I'm really excited to try this out today um, and uh, see where it goes. And uh, all right, so uh, stay tuned. We're gonna try out this eye bobber and see if we can catch a couple of fish. All right, here we are, down by the water. Uh, we're gonna try out that eye bobber today. We're also gonna see if there is, isn't some trout, maybe some salmon kicking around in here. Who knows, maybe some panfish. I'm gonna try some small baits on a bobber. And we're gonna see what happens with that. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, water's open, it's really cold though. We're gonna find out what the temperature is. So, as I mentioned before, I bought this eye bobber uh, over, the, over the holiday, over the, over the winter. And, uh, with the goal of trying to do a little bit better underwater mapping. And here's so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cast this out here and see how it actually works. Now I already took the time to go into my settings and set up this eye bobber. So now all you have to do is uh, you know you download the app, you sync it all up and like that. So what you do to turn it on, you're gonna put it in the water here, then you go to your settings, and then connect eye bobber fish finder. It's going to show you the available devices. Give it just a minute. You hit connect, and uh, should flash when it's all connected, and it did. So now here we are. Um, we're going to cancel that part, and looks like we're all set. So we can get some information right off the bobber here. Uh, water temp apparently is 62 degrees, which I find that hard to believe. Um, we're going to have to get a little bit more accurate than that. So. Uh, let's see if I can uh, cast this out and, and, and see what actually happens here. You know? Hopefully you guys are getting a good look at what I'm seeing. So we're going to do a little bit of a flip cast here just to see if it gives me any different depths. Um, here we go. We're just going to kind of rock it out there, get an idea of what it might be. And like I said, I'm, I'm in the current here. so. Deep. 
actually less than that, four feet. Uh, four and a half. Uh, there's a fish there, it's marking a fish um, as it's coming in. You know, a little bit of weeds, there's going to be some debris on the bottom there. Uh, it's about, uh, okay, so I did read that the, one of the problems with this fish finder is it really doesn't register anything typically under five feet, and uh, this is kind of what I'm seeing here. It's not registering really much under five feet. I'm pretty much right up against the bank here. Well, actually, no, it's gone about three and a half, which is probably pretty accurate where that bobber is sitting right now. So you can see where the bobber is, pretty much right off the bank. That's probably fairly accurate. I know there's a little brush pile down there, so... You know, but see how it dropped back to seven now? Uh, and it could be because I pulled it a little bit and it shot sideways versus straight down. We'll see if that's actually the case here. Okay. No, still holding at that three and a half foot mark. Let's uh, see if we can do the Okay, that's a little, probably a little more accurate too. 53 degrees in the water temperature. Uh, it's really dropped. You see that up in the top left. It's showing 53 degrees. Um, let's go back to the home screen here. Uh, let's do a little water bed and uh, see what we got going on. I'm going to reel this in really slow. And see how the mapping feature works. Uh, huh. It's not really showing me much here. And I'm already hung up in a tree. Okay. You know, we're going to have to redo this. What we're going to do, we're going to cast upstream here. So we're going to stop this. And we're going to do another water bed here. And we're going to cast the eye bobber upstream there and see what happens. Okay. So it's going to act like I'm reeling it in and uh, it, it's actually just floating along so I think that that's going to be kind of how I can map all this uh, versus you know in a pond where you definitely want to reel it in this is almost like the same thing I'm getting that one path that it's traveling through and hopefully it starts to show me some differences here I'm not seeing a lot of differences here um, all right well I don't see well, that really made a lot of difference. Um, we're going to try that again. So we're going to X that out. I might be doing this wrong. So let me try and I'll try and cast out a little further to that slack water out there. So waterbed. Press OK when ready to map. So we're going to. Cast that out. Uh oh. And there goes my fucking eye bobber. It just came right up. My fucking line snapped. Completely. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Not good. 911 emergency here. We're going to see if we can't catch that fucking line. God damn it. Fucking line just snapped on the fucking 20 pound braid. This is not good. Not good at all. We got an eye bobber floating around out there. 100 bucks worth of gear. See if I can't catch that line. Oh my god. That braid broke right off the reel for some reason. Must have been sitting in the truck. I don't know. I'm going to try and catch that line. I got to try and catch that line because otherwise I'm losing that eye bobber. Oh my god. Boy, I checked that line too. I checked, I made sure I got a good knot on it this morning. I can't believe it just came off like that. That is absolutely crazy. Um, hopefully, I can catch the line. It's on there. And it looks like it's going to swing back my way at some point. But then it might just flow right down river and that's going to be it, man. It's, that eye bobber might be gone at this point. Oh, not good. Not good. This is uh, kind of daunting right now. And if I got to go over to that other side, I can't even get close to it with this lure. I just threw on the first thing that I had at my disposal. Oh. 
I got it. I got it. I hooked the line. I hooked the line. All right. Good. Good. I hooked the line. See, there it is. <laughs> wow, it just snapped off right at the reel. I'm so, so very fortunate. Oh. Oh, my God. So, wow. I don't know why that line just snapped. That's brand new braid that I put on there just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so it's not all that old. Something must have happened. I mean, the problem with braid, and I think I'm just going to step away from it completely, is that once it gets a nick in it, it's pretty much shot. Mono, you can beat it up pretty good, you know, but uh, I, I can't spend this time worrying about whether or not I'm going to lose a hundred dollar piece of equipment because there's a little nick in my line. I mean, I just, you see how much line I'm pulling in? That's just pretty much, um, yeah, this is some bad juju right now. Uh, I think that the experiment for today with the eye bobber is probably over. I'm going to go home, re-spool, because the other rods that I have here aren't heavy. Uh, they're all light action, you know, 6 to 8 pounds. I'm not going to throw that out there on a 6 to 8 pound line. This is, uh, whew, wow. Uh, well, I almost lost that investment. We got to experiment with it just a little bit, but uh, fortunately, I did get it back. That's going to go right in my backpack, and... Uh, that part of the experiment today is done, so we'll just see if we can't catch some fish. Let me put this away. All right. Holy. Guacamole, baby. That just kind of blew my mind there for a minute. So we're just going to tuck that away in there for now. I just want it out of the way, kind of secured. Now, just about ready to watch a hundred bucks float down the river. <laughs> Whew. All right. Crisis averted. All right, so let's go on to phase two here. We're going to set up a little bobber with a mealworm or a... Um... Well, people, heading home now. Uh, it wasn't the best day in the world. Uh, started off trying to test out that eye bobber and ran into some complications. Uh, <laughs> nearly lost the darn thing. And... You know, I've got some rethinking to do. I really didn't get it to test it out as much as I wanted to. I never tied it back on. I'm going to go home and re-spool that rod with some better line. Probably put some mono on there. I trust that a little bit more in the braid. Uh, that way, if it gets a nick or something like that, it doesn't pop off on the reel like it happened today. There was probably at least 60, 70 feet worth of line that had come off. And, it, you know, fortunately that happened because I was able to snag the line and uh, reel it back in so I didn't lose that piece. But uh, the rest of the day, I went to four different spots. Uh, you know, I was using uh, mealworms, I was using garden worms, and using a couple of uh, lures. A, uh, I was using um, uh, an inline willow leaf spinner, and a, uh, I was using a, one of my favorites, Tiger Chartreuse jerkbait, it's a small one. I ended up losing that jerkbait, so I did find one earlier on, and then I lost one in the end of the day, so I guess uh, you know, everything evens out in the end. Uh, that was one of my favorite lures, though, so I'm going to have to get online and get another one, because uh, you know, with uh, trout, pinfish, and like that, it's one of my favorite lures to throw, uh, even with small bass. Uh, I've even had uh, bass up to 2-3 pounds uh, take that small, uh, that small tiger chartreuse jerkbait, so I'm gonna go home and order one of those. So hopefully I'll get out again and be able to spend some serious time really getting this eye bobber dialed in. But at least I got out today. It was a good day. It was warm temperatures. I got also had the opportunity to test out my new uh, camera with the external mic. Uh, got to review that. Hopefully uh, it came out well. I believe it did. I did test it at home and the sound quality was pretty good. I don't know what it'll be like outdoors. So. We will see uh, when I review the tape, but I will post a video out of this just for the eye bobber point. And y'all can laugh at me when you see me lose my eye bobber and I kind of have a little freak out moment. <laughs> well, this is Deep Pots with Flippin' Fish. Hope y'all catch a monster.